giant dinosaurs, ancient reptiles that ruled the land. Many millions of years ago, the earth was a very different place. There were no people. The land was low and flat. Shallow seas covered much of the earth's surface. It was summer all year long, and great ferns, palm-like trees, and strange shrubs grew everywhere. In this strange landscape lived the dinosaurs, the giants and killers of the past. Dinosaurs were reptiles. They were the early relatives of today's turtles, snakes, lizards, and crocodiles. They ruled the world for about 160 million years, many times longer than human beings have even existed. At the time of the dinosaurs, there were also other animals on the earth. Some were water-dwelling reptiles that looked like huge sea serpents. Some were flying reptiles that glided on leathery wings. Some were insects, like the huge dragonflies that hummed through the air on two-foot-long wings. And some, tiny, furry creatures, were the first mammals. There were hundreds of kinds of dinosaurs. Some walked on two legs, others walked on four. Some ate only meat, others fed only on plants. Over millions of years, the dinosaurs kept changing or adapting to the changing world. Some died out and were replaced by others. Some kept growing bigger and bigger. The biggest dinosaurs were the plant eaters. They were peaceful animals who loved nothing better than moving about near shorelines or swamps looking for tender plants. They had to eat almost all the time just to keep their huge stomachs full of food. Some were so big that their size alone was enough to frighten away their enemies. Others had armor to protect them from attack. Some could move quickly, making the earth thunder as they tried to outrun their enemies. Often the best defense was to reach the safety of the water. One of the largest plant-eating dinosaurs was Brontosaurus. Its name means thunder lizard. Brontosaurus was over 70 feet long. So the ground must have thundered with each step this reptile took. Brontosaurus spent most of its time near the water's edge. Water meant safety, and water meant juicy plants for huge appetites. Brontosaurus had a body like a blimp and legs as thick as tree trunks. Its neck was almost as long as its tail, yet its tiny head was no wider than its neck. Peg-like teeth helped this huge dinosaur pull up the plants it gulped by the ton. Some scientists think it could stay almost completely under the water for long periods of time because its eyes and nostrils were near the top of its head. Although Brontosaurus spent much of its time in the water, it sometimes joined a herd and traveled over land to find better feeding places. Most of its enemies would not attack a group of these enormous animals. As the herd thundered along, the baby dinosaurs stayed in the center. That way, they were safe from danger. When Allosaurus came into sight, Brontosaurus headed for the water. It could wade out into water so deep that only its head and neck were above the surface. There, the huge plant eater was safe from its sharp-toothed enemy. If Brontosaurus could not reach the safety of the water, 
it probably lashed out with its powerful tail. Diplodocus was the longest of all the dinosaurs. In fact, it was the longest animal ever to walk on the earth. From its tiny head to the tip of its tail, it was nearly 90 feet long. It looked something like Brontosaurus, but it was thinner and did not weigh as much. With its slender build, Diplodocus could move very quickly if it had to. If a hungry meat eater came too near, Diplodocus could run away and escape. Or if water was near, Diplodocus would just wade in hip deep. Its enemy was left on land, gnashing its teeth. Like Brontosaurus, Diplodocus spent most of the day searching for plants to eat. It munched from dawn to dusk on ferns, water weeds, and plants called horsetails, which grew at the water's edge. Sometimes it ate leaves and shrubs at the edge of nearby forests. The heaviest plant-eating dinosaur of all was Brachiosaurus. It weighed about 85 tons. Some scientists have said that an animal this size must have spent most of its life in the water. Others say that it roamed through tropical forests eating twigs, soft bark and leaves from even the tallest trees. It may have eaten over a ton of food every day. Brachiosaurus was built something like a giraffe. Its stocky front legs were longer than its hind legs. It could stretch its long neck out and reach any food that was within 40 feet of its body. Small groups of these hungry dinosaurs could eat their way through a tropical swamp or forest in a few days. Smaller dinosaurs kept their distance when Brachiosaurus moved around. Its huge feet could flatten anything that happened to be in the way. With one blow of its 15-ton tail, Brachiosaurus could knock a meat-eater senseless. So even the mighty Allosaurus usually hesitated to attack. But when Allosaurus was very hungry, Brachiosaurus must have looked like a tempting meal. If Allosaurus could get past the thrashing tail, it might be able to sink its sharp teeth into the plant eater's huge body. Then it could rip away chunk after chunk of soft flesh. The wounded giant would fall and crash to the ground, and Allosaurus would feed on its kill for many days. Allosaurus was well equipped to be a killer. It had a huge head and powerful jaws. With its dagger-like teeth and huge claws, it could tear its victims to pieces in minutes. This ferocious reptile was 35 feet long and weighed over eight tons. Yet it was very fast. Making great strides on its hind legs, Allosaurus could attack its victim in seconds. Allosaurus had a heavy, muscular tail. When this huge killer moved, the weight of its tail helped to balance the rest of its body. When Allosaurus stood still, its muscular tail rested on the ground and helped to support the weight of the mighty reptile's body. Allosaurus often attacked small dinosaurs. A young brontosaurus separated from its mother would be an easy kill, much easier than fighting the full-grown parents. With a few quick snaps of its vicious jaws, Allosaurus could tear its victim to pieces. But Allosaurus did not always kill its own prey. It did not have to. It was big enough to rob other dinosaurs of their kills. Allosaurus did not even have to fight for this kind of meal, all it had to do was show itself, and the smaller meat-eaters would head for safety. Then Allosaurus would enjoy a free meal.
some dinosaurs had armor to protect them from the meat eaters. Stegosaurus had bony plates on its back and sharp spikes on the end of its tail. If it was attacked, this armored plant eater would turn its back on its attacker and lash out with its spiked tail. A few blows usually drove the attacker away. Trachodon's only defense against its enemies was the water. A trachodon was a duck-billed dinosaur with webbed feet. It was usually safe while it looked for plants in the shallow water of the muddy swamps, but on dry land, this gentle reptile was easy prey for meat eaters. If a hungry meat eater caught a trachodon on land, the duck-billed dinosaur didn't have a chance. The meat eater attacked with its claws and teeth. It sank its long curved claws into its victim and then jerked and tugged with its teeth until the flesh tore away. It kept eating until it was full. After it rested, it probably ate some more. The fiercest of all the killer dinosaurs was Tyrannosaurus rex. This monster was one of the largest flesh-eating animals that ever lived. It was 50 feet long and stood 20 feet high, much bigger than its ancestor, Allosaurus. Its front legs were tiny and almost useless, but Tyrannosaurus didn't need them. Striding across the land, Tyrannosaurus rex was truly the king of the tyrants. Its gigantic head was almost five feet long, and its jaws could open three feet wide. Its dagger-like teeth could easily rip through a victim's leathery hide. They were six inches long and strong enough to crunch bones in one mighty bite. Tyrannosaurus attacked anything that moved, but scientists think it fed mostly on duck-billed dinosaurs. One common duck-bill was Corythosaurus, a strange creature with a crest on top of its head. Most duck-billed dinosaurs were about 30 feet long, but they were no match for Tyrannosaurus. Instead of fighting, they usually ran for the safety of the water. One dinosaur that did not have to run from Tyrannosaurus was Triceratops. Triceratops was a plant eater, but it could protect itself in a fight. It had a heavy muscular body, something like that of a rhinoceros, but its neck was hidden under a high bony collar, and on its head were three pointed horns. Triceratops was not afraid to fight anything. Tyrannosaurus, the meat eater, had to be very hungry to attack Triceratops. When it did, Tyrannosaurus would slash and snap with its great jaws. Then, Triceratops would lower its head and make quick jabs and thrusts with its deadly horns. Sometimes the plant eater drove its horns deep into the enemy's body. But if the armored reptile made one mistake, Tyrannosaurus would quickly move in for the kill. Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops were among the last of the great dinosaurs to roam the earth. Then, about 70 million years ago, the dinosaurs became extinct. They all died out. Why? Scientists are not sure. But the great reptiles that ruled the earth for 160 million years have disappeared forever. No other creatures have reigned so long or so successfully.